I think starting back, uh, looking back on 2009, um, it was a little nerve wracking to be honest. Uh, I'm a San Diego guy and uh, I didn't really know what the East Coast had to offer, but you know, the Nationals were there from the beginning. Um, you know, I, I became a father, uh, became a husband uh, as a national. Um, I've just, I've grown with this organization and it, it's become home to me. And, you know, I just want to thank the learners for giving me this opportunity to continue my career here. Uh, they've, they've built one of the best organizations throughout the league and their commitment to winning is one of the big reasons why I wanted to stay on board. Um, last year was the highlight of my career, uh, going out there and, and starting the way we did and uh, finishing the way we did. That, that's something that I'll just I'll, I'll remember for the rest of my life. Um, you know, with that said, I'm excited to get back and doing it again and, and getting that journey started in February. Thank you. Scott. It's really, really rare in baseball that someone can go and establish a legacy of his choice. And uh, I think the uh, Lerner family, Mark, Ted, the organization, Mike, Alan, everyone involved, I think, allow for something to evolve that makes a family, as a player, part of a family. And I think that's been achieved in, in Washington. They've demonstrated a, a caring for a player um, that often involved difficult decisions. And we're also pleased that in making the right decisions that, that all turned out so well and rewarded the franchise with the championship. I can't think of many players that can be the number one draft pick have a beautiful wife, lovely children, win a world championship, and get to carry out his career uh, as his goal of his mentor in, in Tony Gwynn to be a legacy player for a franchise. And that tells you how great Steven Strasburg is. All right, we'll open the floor to questions. We have Chris and Alec on the sides. Please wait for the microphone. And who would like to go first? Uh, Mel in the back. Stephen, you mentioned that you were from San Diego and now Washington is home. Earlier in your career, was there ever a thought that, I've, that you probably would think about going back to San Diego? I mean, could that, could that have entered your mind early? Um, I mean, to be honest, throughout my career, uh, I'm so fortunate to you know, have the, the backing of the team, the ownership, and they've made it very clear that they want me to be a part of this organization uh, moving forward. And throughout the course of my career, there's been ups and downs, but they've supported me throughout it all. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's hard to come by in the, in this game. And it's just creating an environment that I feel like I can thrive in and achieve what I wanted to do on the field and off the field as well. Uh, Mark. Hey, Steven. Um, only a handful of players in this game get the opportunity to spend a whole career in one place. By the end of this contract, it'll be 17 years with one organization. Um, Scott mentioned Tony Gwynn. He's one of the few who's done that. Growing up, was that something that meant something to you and mattered to you? And, and do you sense uh, how rare that is and how much that matters to a lot of people, that there aren't very many who are able to do that for a whole career like that? Um, yeah, I, I think it does have an impact on uh, the organization from a standpoint that, you know, I mean, I'm, I've been around here long enough to know that a lot of the young kids don't even know who I am. They know who Trey Turner is. They know who Juan Soto is. But, uh, you know, I think, I think as much as the Nats fans that were here from day one um, grow up with this organization and continue to pass the tradition down to their kids, um, that's, that's something that you want to be a part of. I think that's something really cool. And I think, you know, I'm – it's great for me to say that you know I'm a, I'm going to be a national for life, but to have my kids be here too and experience being nationals for life as well, um, that's something that's I'm really fortunate with, and uh, you know they're in such a great position here to to thrive and um, you know my oldest just started school and she's loving every minute of it, so it's uh, it's definitely a, 
a benefit. So. Uh, Darren, why don't you open the mic, please? Hey, Stephen. Uh, describe the process uh, of finally, ultimately, coming down to making the decision to stick around here in D.C. Yeah, I think it was um, – there was a lot of things, you know, at play. And, um, you know, I – for me, I, I, I let you know my agent do all the communication there. I, I kind of let him what I, what I really desire at the end of the day, and once that's, you know, explained, it's kind of I trust I trust in his ability to get it done, and um, you know, for me, it was kind of just unwinding from the crazy season, and focusing on getting ready for the next one. Uh, Jesse on the right. Stephen, we, when we were in San Diego, Scott mentioned that. Uh, the shutdown in 2012 maybe built a lot of trust between you and the organization in the front office, showed they cared about you as a player, person. Um, how much did something like that factor into your thinking and reflecting on that time sort of make you want to stay here, I don't, if, if it did at all? Um, me, me personally, I, I think I've learned over the years that it's very important to be in the moment. Um, you, you can't really look back. You can't really look too far ahead. Um, I know fr I can understand from you know a management side that those are things you have to consider. Uh, for me as a player, though, like that's not really a part of my job description. Uh, it's it's about making adjustments and doing everything I can to be the best version of myself. Uh, Moises in the back. Uh, Steven, I'll ask you in Spanish and I'll translate it in English. If you you could answer in Spanish if you want. Might be tough. Yeah, we have a the el sentimiento de ser seleccionados por los nacionales de Washington y años después regresar aquí y hablar que te vas a retirar con la camiseta de Washington. Can you talk about those feelings about being drafted by the Nationals, coming back and now talking about retiring as a, as a Washington National? Um, I mean, I mean, I think like like it was touched on earlier, um, it's really hard to come by in this game. And I think when you're given an opportunity to be in one spot, and grow as a person, as a player, and be a part of an organization like this. Um, you can't really let those let those opportunities go by. Um, looking back on when I got drafted, it's uh, it's amazing to see how all the experiences have made me stronger as a person. And I think through the adversity, um, that's what I've learned to kind of welcome the challenge and know that it's just not going to be easy and that it's something that, you know, you put your head down and you keep working at it, you can achieve anything. Uh, Tom? Steven, you mentioned the ups and downs, and all players have them, and plenty of pitchers have them too. When you think about staying in one place, how much does it matter to know that if you have ups and downs in the future, like everybody does, there'll be all of this behind you that fans and people will appreciate and sort of stick with you? Yeah, I mean, I th it's – you know, I'd, I'd like to think that, you know, baseball is a lot like life. And um, I think that's <laughs> – it's, it's okay. I would, I would think that that's, you know, what draws a lot of people to this game. Um, it is a game based on failure. And I think this team really proved that if you believe in one another and you keep fighting, that you can really achieve things that most people thought were impossible. And um, – to be a part of that environment, um, it's it's something that you know you want to hold on to and continue to, you know, be there. Tom on the right. Stephen, uh, you talk about moments. You had such a dramatic moment when you made your debut here in Washington against the Pirates. Uh, what were you thinking that day? Do you remember what you were thinking uh, that day when it was done? And what are your memories from that day? Oh, yeah, that felt like a long time ago. But um, no, that's. I think I've I've become more aware of the thoughts than past than in the past. Like that, I was just so young and dumb that, I mean, I was like, wow, this is really cool, and you have all this adrenaline and stuff, and then, you know, maybe the pressure isn't quite there because you think, okay, this is your first outing, like it can go any different way. Um, but I think it's – you realize quickly in this game that it's not as hard to get here. It's significantly harder to stay here and stay at a high level. And that was more of the challenge 
and that will always continue to be the challenge is, you know, what adjustments are, are necessary to continue to perform at a high level. Um, you know, having, having a great support system here is key. I mean, having, having Max here, um, you know, even Anibal Sanchez that we brought in here, um, Corbin, um, Paul Menhart, like the group of people that I'm able to be around helps me achieve that and helps me focus on, you know, what I can do to, to continue to be successful. Dan? Steven, congratulations. Thanks. Um, you talked throughout the postseason run about how you've grown as a pitcher, as a person. You, you talked about this multiple times. Sitting here today, how would you characterize the Steven Strasburg today compared to the guy that broke into the major leagues? What are the biggest progressions that you would say you've made? Much better dancer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that's – it's it's hard to really describe it. I think it's, you know, only – through it, through experience, you can learn a lot of things about yourself. But you know, you might be there. Might be a coach there that tells you, you know, how to handle certain situations. But until you do it yourself, um, you don't really know how you're going to respond. And uh, I think when you're kind of put in in the fire, put in the middle of a storm, um, that's when your true colors come out. And uh, I think I think you really just focus on what's important. And for me, I. You know, baseball is is a very important part, but at the end of the day, it's um, what type of person, what type of man I I, I am, and um, that's kind of the legacy that you know I want to leave back. Uh, David, oh, Stephen, um, you mentioned Max obviously earlier. Could you expand on that a little bit? Just what the relationship has been like the last few years? What you've learned from him? Maybe what he's learned from you, and how? That has helped you also continue to grow and develop. Yeah, I mean, you know, Maxie coming in here with with all the you know awards and the hardware, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was uh, it was a little eye opening for me for sure. Um, I think he could say this too. I think our personalities are are very different. Um, I'm very quiet, but. I mean, he goes out there and, and he's fearless. And, you know, I think there's certain ten times that I have a tendency to maybe, like, you know, not shy away from things or shy away from, you know, certain hitters. But it's like that, that aggressiveness that I watched over those years is that that was something that, like, hey, I don't really care what happens. But it's like as long as I'm aggressive, that's something that is important to me. So. Uh, Jesse? Yeah, for Mike, you looked bored over there, get you involved. <laughs> um, you draft Steven, um, then you sit here for the, his extension. Now you sit here today for, for this news and this new contract. What's it been like for you to watch that journey and maybe what kind of changes, development, growth have you seen in, in him over that time? Well, you know, we, when, uh, when we scouted him as a, as a, a starting pitcher in San Diego State, uh, you know, we, we realized that this was a special talent, uh, had, had a lot of gifts, his repertoire was great. Uh, he had the size, delivery, uh, and stuff to be, a, you know, elite major league starter. But what we found, uh, you know, over the years is that, uh, you know, he's a better teammate and a better man than he is a pitcher. Uh, and uh, he's a pretty damn good pitcher. So okay. uh, we, uh, you know, we, we ad I admire the way he gets after it. Uh, you know, we, know we, we all talk about the past and what happened back then. Um, <clears throat> but we realized growing up together in, in, uh, in this organization that uh, it, it takes a village. And, uh, and you know, this isn't, uh, this isn't the NBA where you give the ball to Michael Jordan and say, win us a title. And this thing is, it takes a village. And uh, it took, uh, it took Strauss, it, it took Max, it took, it took a bunch of guys to, to come together. When everybody was shoveling dirt on it this, this year, it proved that uh, if you believe in yourself, you could do special things. And I think he epitomizes that. Boss? Um, Strauss, uh, there have been a lot of famous rotations in baseball, uh, Kane, Linsipkin, Bumgarner, and Glavin, Maddox, and Smoltz. You've been with Max five years. You're signed with Corbin for six. Do you guys have a sense of yourself, now that you've won a World Series, as potentially a historic rotation, big three, whatever you um, – I'm sorry. Not the history oh. so much, but do you have that sense of a threesome? <laughs> um, no, I – <laughs> um, 
No, I, th- I, I think I think we're all three of us. Um, the things that we really enjoy about this game is the day in and day out grind, um, trying to perfect something that's almost impossible to perfect. Um, the craft of that comes with pitching. I think that's something that we all try and you know tap into all of the ability that we have and d- use it. And um, you know, for for me, that's it's the simplest form. It's not you know where you stack up in history or you know what your legacy is going to be, what you know they're going to say in the in the record books. It's really a matter of you know when everything is over what will I wish I had done? And, um, you know, that's something that's always fueled the fire for me. The simplest things in the game of just going out there and throwing a certain pitch exactly where you want it. Um, that's what kind of makes me tick. Uh, the bat, Matt. Steven, Scott mentioned your former mentor, Tony Gwynn. What kind of impact did he leave on you that stays with you today? Uh, and do you feel like you are honoring him as a legacy player? I mean, I I can only speak for the impact that it had on me as a kid. Um, You know, he's he's he will always be Mr. Padre. Uh, The impact that he had in the community, um, something I'll never forget. And I think, you know, as as a kid, that's what really um, uh, drew me to him as being my favorite player was that he was always there in right field um, for 20 years. So, Uh, Mel. Steven, during this free agent process, was there ever a time you went to bed at night thinking that you'd be in a, di- with, in a different uh, organization? Um, yeah, I think it's pretty common. Um, you know, again, it was more playing the what if, and um, it was, I really just tried to focus on, hey, like, I, season's over, and I got to get ready for next season. Um, that was kind of my solace through this process. Um, luckily, it didn't last as long as as other other people. So um, it was I was able to kind of put it behind me and now fully prepare for uh, spring training down there in West Palm Beach. Uh, Byron? Steven, how intense were your negotiations with Anthony Rendon? And uh, um, <laughs> has Mike called on you to, uh, to work with other free agents here in the next few weeks? Um, yeah, I, mean, I was in contact with Tony, and um, you know, I, I I have so much respect for that guy and for that family and everything he represents. And um, you know, I I just wanted him to be in a situation that was best for him and his family. Um, happy for him. Um, I think that's that's the way the game is. Is that you know, some some guys might think that there's a better solution out there, and it's respectable. Um, he's earned that right. So for me, I, I knew where I wanted to be. And, um, you know, I trust that moving forward, um, we're, the team is committed to winning and that we want to go back, go out there next year and, uh, you know, keep, keep going right where we left off. So anything else for Mark? Uh, you and Max and Patrick did things in October you had never had to do before in your career. What's the recovery process been like, and how much are you looking forward to the challenge of now trying to um, come into next season and pick up where you left off after that kind of workload? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's funny. You go win the World Series, and everybody starts to write you off for next year. So I think that's pouring gas on the fire for me and I think for a lot of other guys. Um, so it's it's really you know there's there's no stopping us now. Um, we're gonna go into into next season like we did last year, and that was you know finish the fight and uh, stay in the fight. You know all those all those things that we kind of held on to during the season. Um, those are things that we can't control, and those are things that we expect out of ourselves and the guy next to us. Darren, uh, Scott, this is actually for you. Um, with Garrett Cole, Rendon, now Strasburg. What have the last two weeks been like for you? Um, <clears throat> as to Steven, it's the kind of thing where you, you really want to accomplish a goal. Uh, and the goal is 
And it takes a lot of information to really for a family to sit down and say, after they receive it, they really understand the clarity of, of what that path is. And in this instance, Mike kept in contact with me throughout. And, um, and I had the, you know, the privilege, obviously, to talk with Ted and Mark about Strauss's situation. So we always had the, the dynamic in the, uh, as far as the organizational goals. And um, it was very clear that Stephen was a priority. And I think for Rachel and Stephen to know that, that um, you know, those things are important for players to know. And it allowed us, to, I think, a very efficient process and an early process because once that was known that uh, uh, the meeting of the minds could, could come together. And so it was, a, um, it was something that I think is really important because you, free agency, is, it, it's, it's a cleansing process. You kind of forget a lot of things and then you begin to re-understand things and then you define what's important because you just have a lot of information coming to you in a short period of time. This poor guy was locked away in a hotel room for six hours a day, like six, seven times. So it was, uh, I had to get that done because he was not very happy, but he wanted to go work out. So it, it was a, uh, but it, it was a longstanding process and a thorough one. And I, and I think that uh, it, it really allowed, you know, Rachel and Stephen to, to make a very clear decision.